it becomes a bit challenging when you think about, you know, the ice melting in the polar caps, the animals dying, all because of global warming. And if you were to just think about the overarching problems and it all just distills down to one simple problem that is carbon dioxide. And if the brightest minds of engineering cannot solve it so far, yeah, might as well give the kids a chance. Monash Carbon Capture and Conversion is a student team here at Monash University that is developing carbon dioxide removal technologies, which we are doing in three ways, microalgae, forestry and direct air capture. So this is the most exciting thing uh, that has happened uh, in the last 12 years, I would say. Like, you know, the student teams uh, are a great initiative by the Faculty of Engineering. Monash has this great environment where we come with an idea, we come with passion, and it's always full support for the students to actually go ahead and, and try out. We try, we fail fast, but we learn and we do better. It is a group of friends trying to work together to solve a problem that I say that a generation before us created. The vision would be to create a meaningful change in the way we actually capture carbon dioxide, store them and utilize them. Our microalgae is being made into biochar for fertilizers. Our wood from the forestry project will then be engineered into cross-laminated timber and a CO2 from the DAC will then be converted into polyethylene for the sustainable plastics industry. What we're doing is we're capturing the CO2 in the algae and ocean algae is interesting because it has carbon concentrating mechanisms that other freshwater algae doesn't have, which means that it'll concentrate more CO2 and uptake more of it than an average freshwater algae will. So the microalgae team is working on designing uh, an algae farm uh, which is going to be uh, comprised of multiple floating bioreactors. The main goal when designing the PBR was uh, incorporating mixing. So we wanted the algae to circulate uh, and absorb all the sunlight it possibly can so it could grow. Once all the algae has grown in the PBR, we'll harvest it, dry it and use it uh, for later for the biochar team. Biochar is basically charcoal but made from biomass um, and in this instance it was microalgae. We get it, we dry it up, we put it through the pyrolysis machine and we get biochar and essentially this biochar will store carbon for up to 100 years or more and the aim of this biochar will be to be used as a soil amendment, um, help crops grow, plants grow. As uh, everyone knows plants capture carbon as they grow um, through you know, the process of uh, photosynthesis. So the idea is that if we grow plants en masse, hopefully we can harness their natural CO2 capture ability in order to capture carbon. We're also looking to capture carbon in the soil. Plants naturally capture a lot of soil carbon, but we're trying to enhance this by including biochar. Biochar helps stabilize nutrients and stabilize water. Um, and by including it in the soil, hopefully the plants can capture more CO2 from the atmosphere by growing faster, photosynthesizing for longer and at a greater rate. So with forestry, we're looking at using three different species. Sorghum as a ground crop, bamboo as a midstory, and we have polonia or empress trees as a canopy. Just because we're growing plants doesn't mean the carbon's going to be captured forever. Um, if you just take the plants and cut down the biomass, it's just going to um, decay. It's going to turn into greenhouse gases and get released back into the atmosphere. So the idea is what we're doing with our biomass that we generate is that we are passing that over to the CLT part of the project and they're trying to create a long life construction materials out of it. Then that carbon is locked up. Yeah, so um, carbon is captured by the trees, then we <laughs> cut it down and then we can turn this into engineered timber. Um, so we are making a three-layered CLT and so CLT is basically having layers of timber that have the grain run uh, at a different direction. So the idea is to um, try and increase sustainable construction materials in the industry. Uh, you know, right now we're using concrete and steel which um, I think they both contribute to like 10 or 11 percent global CO2 emissions and so being able to use uh, timber in buildings kind of acts as the uh, carbon storage um, out of buildings. What we don't use in CLT, hopefully we want to send to the biochar team 
to help pad out their biochar in conjunction with the algal biomass that the algae teams produce. And that's what we're aiming for at our Monash Carbon Capture and Conversion is to show that all these individual technologies can work together in conjunction, synergize with one another to create a much bigger overarching approach. We've done the startup phase and now it's about scaling up and actually making sure that what we actually claim is true. And also be able to make a product which lasts more than 100 years and doesn't go back into the atmosphere. With that diverse portfolio that we have, we are confident that it will capture, you know, a thousand tons of CO2 uh, a year. We're not making new products. We're making products that already exist, but from a different source. Instead of using petrochemical, we're using carbon dioxide from the air. Yeah, a chemical industry has a bad name. If you, if you talk about a chemical plant, most people think of pollution coming out of a plant rather than what products it makes, right? Uh, but every day people use those products. They don't think about the environmental impact back then, you know, when you're buying those things. We have created the problem, we have to solve it. We are working on market analysis, understanding the social impacts and how can we actually as a team ensure that we, you know, don't impact that too much as well as we look to develop and build um, this at scale. Obviously we, you know, we need partnerships with industries. We have immense support from our faculties, the Woodside partnerships that we have, and of course the XPRIZE itself, right? They believe in us. Imagine more people, more companies, more industries, more angel investors who would be keen to actually invest into all of our five projects and believe in the students that work in them, give them an opportunity outside universities and take it up seriously into the industries as well. Capturing carbon dioxide from atmospheric air is not the easiest thing and to be able to see a technology that is processing air um, that has CO2 at 400 ppm and getting it out at potentially 99.9% um, at your outlet stream, uh, when that happens that will, you know, it will be an amazing um, achievement. When you pass on the baton to somebody else after we leave the team, success is that the passion is still there to bring the vision that we have set to life. It's been a phenomenal experience and I, you know, it's, it's once in a lifetime opportunity for me. For us as students, we always like to have great visions. You have large dreams, sure, you might not achieve them, but you will get somewhere. <laughs>